Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Nurse Melissa and I am a registered nurse. So today's video is going to be a nursing skills demonstration where I'm going to be demonstrating how to take a blood pressure reading using an automatic blood pressure cuff. And I'm gonna go ahead and put chapters down below so that you can easily skip ahead or skip over any part of this video. So in a previous video, I did a nursing skills demonstration on how to obtain a blood pressure reading using a manual blood pressure cuff. And while that's a good skill to have, especially if you're a nursing student, because you're gonna need that for your nursing skills check off, the truth is that in today's healthcare settings, most healthcare settings and pretty much all hospitals use automatic blood pressure cuffs. And you're also gonna to wanna to use an automatic blood pressure cuff if you are taking your blood pressure at home with an at-home kit, which is what I'm going to be using to do my demonstration today. So in this video, I'm going to go over the different parts of an automatic blood pressure cuff, along with how to take a blood pressure using an automatic cuff. And lastly, I'm going to briefly talk about how to interpret your reading after you take your blood pressure. Now I'm going to go over the different parts of an automatic blood pressure cuff. Now I got this cuff, I believe from either Walmart or Walgreens or CVS. You can purchase these cups at a variety of different stores. You can even get them online. I'll go ahead and link um, a link to a good blood pressure cuff in my description box. But when you purchase these cuffs, they typically come in a kit. Each kit can vary and each blood pressure machine can vary a little bit, but I'm going to go over the very basic tools that every single kit comes with and that you need in order to take a blood pressure. First is going to be the actual cuff. All blood pressure kits are going to come with a cuff. Whether it's a manual kit, an automatic kit, whether you're in the hospital, this is what you're actually going to wrap around the patient's arm in order to get their blood pressure reading. So next we have the tube or the air tube. This is what's going to provide air into our cuff. It's what's going to drain air out of the cuff. And it is also what connects the cuff to our blood pressure monitor, which I'm going to talk about next. So lastly, we have our blood pressure monitor. And there are really only three parts to an automatic blood pressure cuff. And that's because the monitor has so many different functions and serves so many different purposes. So with a manual cuff, you have to have a gauge to give you your blood pressure reading. You have to have a bulb to pump air into the blood pressure cuff. But with an automatic cuff, the monitor does all of that for you. So with this specific blood pressure monitor, you see it can get kind of fancy. It kind of has a person A, person B, so you can, you can kind of share it with another person. It can memorize your blood pressure. It's great for tracking your blood pressure. It has a memory function, there's a timer. You don't need to worry about any of that because like I said, every kit can vary. The most important button that every single kit has is either an on or off button or a start or stop button. And when you press this button, air is going to pump through the tubing into the blood pressure cuff. It's gonna take your patient's blood pressure and then the display is going to give you your patient's systolic blood pressure and their diastolic blood pressure. And that is it. It's very simple with an automatic cuff. And when you're in the hospital, it works exactly the same way. You put the cuff on the patient, you're going to press your machine to tell it to start. And in a couple of seconds, really, it's going to tell you what the patient's blood pressure is, their systolic blood pressure and their diastolic blood pressure. So now we're going to demonstrate how to take a blood pressure using this automatic cuff. So now that I've gone over the different parts of an automatic blood pressure machine, I'm going to do a demonstration on how to obtain a blood pressure using an automatic machine by doing a demonstration on myself. So before I go into the demonstration, I do want to go over a few things. Number one is that before you take either your blood pressure or a patient's blood pressure, you wanna make sure that they are relaxed in the moments leading up to you obtaining their blood pressure. So at least five minutes before taking the blood pressure, try to make sure that you or your patient are sitting down, not really talking, not walking around, not moving around, and you're relaxed so that you do not have a heightened blood pressure and get an inaccurate reading. You also wanna make sure that they're not drinking caffeinated drinks like coffee because that can also spike up the blood pressure and give an inaccurate, abnormally high reading. While you're taking the blood pressure, make sure that you or your patient do not have your arms or legs crossed because that can also increase blood pressure and that can give an inaccurate reading. 
And for the most accurate reading, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're placing the cuff in the proper spot. So you're going to palpate for the brachial artery. And once you find the brachial artery, you're gonna go about half an inch above that. And that is where you're going to place the base of your blood pressure cuff. Some blood pressure cuffs, really most, come with a diagram. This one has a diagram. And it says, position the cuff half an inch above your elbow. So it does have instructions. Half an inch above the elbow, that's basically half an inch above the brachial artery. It's essentially the same thing. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're placing the cuff directly on your patient's skin. So for my demonstration, I'm going to be rolling up my sleeve. And I got a lot of comments on the last blood pressure video that I made, and I'm fully aware when I went to clinicals and when I go to the hospital or to urgent care, I've had nurses and techs just put the blood pressure cuff over my clothes. That is kind of a shortcut when you're doing your nursing skills checkoffs, when you're doing clinicals in the hospital, when you're looking at your exams. Really the cuff is supposed to go underneath the clothing for the most accurate reading. So that is what I will be doing today in my demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and place the blood pressure cuff on me. First, like I said, I'm going to roll up my sleeve so that I'm placing it directly on my skin. And now I'm going to slip it on. I am putting the base of the blood pressure cuff about half an inch above my brachial artery, about half an inch above my elbow. And I'm going to secure it using Velcro. Now when you're securing the blood pressure cuff, you wanna make sure that the cuff fits snugly. It's not moving around my arm but you don't want it to be too tight. If it's too tight, it can cut off the circulation, it can occlude the brachial artery, and you will not get an accurate reading. So you want it to be snug, but you don't want it to be too tight. And an important thing to note, when taking the blood pressure, you or your patient, whoever's blood pressure you're taking, you wanna make sure that the arm that you're taking the blood pressure reading on is laying on a flat surface at heart center. So you don't want it to be above the patient's head, you don't want it to be laying to either side, it should be right at that heart level. And it doesn't have to be on a solid surface like mine, my arm is. It can be on a pillow, it can be on an armchair or a chair arm. As long as the surface is flat, that's all that you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the start button. And you can see the machine turning on. So what it's doing right now is air is blowing through the tubing and into my blood pressure cuff. So right now it's getting really tight on my arm. And now you can see the pressure is lowering. That is because air is slowly being released through the tubing so that it can give me a blood pressure reading. And I know my blood pressure is going to be elevated because I was drinking coffee and talking <laughs> and running around. And I'm talking right now, my legs are crossed. I'm doing all the things you're not supposed to be doing. So I'm anticipating a high blood pressure. Okay, so as you can see, it gives the systolic blood pressure, which is 117 over my diastolic blood pressure, which is 91. So the 117 is within a good range. The 91 is elevated, but like I said, I was anticipating an elevated blood pressure. And then this machine actually also gives you your pulse, which a lot of automatic blood pressure machines do. So my heart right now is beating at 80 beats per minute. So now very briefly, I'm going to talk about how to interpret blood pressure readings. So. Ideally, in a healthy patient that does not have a history of high blood pressure, you want to see a blood pressure reading of 120 over 80 or below. So that top number, the systolic blood pressure number, should be 120 or below. And then that bottom number, which is the diastolic blood pressure number, that should be 80 or below. Now, when we are identifying an elevated blood pressure, the National Institutes of Health identifies an elevated blood pressure as anything from 121 to 129 for the systolic blood pressure reading. The diastolic blood pressure reading should still be no more than 80, so it can be 80 or below. That is for an elevated blood pressure. Now with an elevated blood pressure, although it is cause for concern, there could be a couple of things that contributed to that elevated blood pressure. So again, if you or your patient, whoever's blood pressure was being taken, were walking around in the minutes leading up to the blood pressure being taken, drinking caffeinated drinks that kind of got the heart 
pumping and beating faster, or if they were talking or had their arms crossed during the blood pressure reading, that could have created an inaccurate blood pressure reading. So if your patient or your blood pressure is slightly elevated, I'd recommend taking a minute to relax and then trying again in five to 15 minutes and seeing if the blood pressure is still elevated. If it is, it's definitely something to monitor and follow up with a primary care physician eventually. Now, when we're talking about high blood pressure, the National Institutes of Health defines high blood pressure as a systolic blood pressure reading of 130 or above, so that top number being 130 or above, and the diastolic blood pressure, which is the bottom number, being above 80. So both the top number and the bottom number are elevated, with the top number being 130 or above. That is considered a high blood pressure and that does require immediate follow-up because that is more serious, especially if you or your patient do not have a history of high blood pressure and you're getting that reading. I would say relax, try taking the blood pressure again in another five minutes, and if it is still high, you should follow up immediately with a healthcare professional. So that is it for this nursing skills video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have any comments, please feel free to comment down below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.